Well, welcome back, everyone. We have Marie Walton from Johnny Appleseed Parks Inn, and we're going to be talking about my favorite bird, which is the hummingbird. Oh. So welcome, Marie. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. So tell us all about this. <laughs> well, hummingbirds are awesome little birds that we're starting to see this time of year. They're kind of migrating back from South America, Central America, and Mexico, which is where they overwinter. Okay. They're making a large journey to get here. So they're traveling about 2,000 miles to get here. And what they're going to be trying to do is make their nests and have their babies here because we have an abundance of their food sources. Mm -hmm. The most uh, common hummingbird that you're likely to see, so nine times out of ten, you're probably going to be seeing a ruby-throated hummingbird. And the male and female look a little bit different from each other, so the, they both have green on the back and white or cream on the underneath, but the males have this ruby-red throat and the females don't, so a little bit different. They're both going to be sporting this long, beautiful black beak that they use to get nectar from flowers. Uh, they're really cool birds for a lot of different reasons. So they're our smallest bird here in Ohio. They're super tiny. They're only three and a half inches. But even though they're really small, they're really fast. So they can travel 30 miles per hour, which is extremely fast when you consider how small they are. And they have some of the best maneuverability. So they're one of the only birds that can move forwards, backwards, and even fly upside down. Huh. And they're able to do this by flapping their wings about 70 times per second. So they're using a lot of energy. They're moving super fast and they're moving a lot. And they use uh, energy sources such as tiny mosquitoes and spiders and little caterpillars to supply them with energy. But for quick energy, they're using nectar from flowers. So that's kind of like their Gatorade. <laughs> yeah, good, I like that. <laughs> Uh, they're going to be nesting this time of year, and their nests are really cool. So they make their nests out of moss and lichens that they glue together with pine resin and spider silk. They kind of weave these things to make their tiny little nests. I've never seen a hummingbird nest. So oh, this they're is really, really unique. Yeah. They look really cool. When you see one of these in nature, you always know that's a hummingbird nest because nothing else really looks like it. Their eggs are super small, so they're only going to be about the size of a jelly bean. Yeah, don't get that mixed up with the Easter candy. <laughs> Forbidden jelly bean. <laughs> and when their babies are born, they're about the size of a jelly bean, too. Oh. And they're born completely bald and blind and helpless, and they can't even heat their own bodies. So the mommy hummingbird is a super mom. She's going to be doing everything for her babies. So she's the one who builds the nest. She incubates the babies for 15 days while they're eggs until they hatch. They can't heat their own bodies, so she's going to be cuddling with them and sitting near them, trying to keep them warm. And she's also the one foraging for them and feeding them. So every 20 minutes during the day, the babies are going to need fed. So she'll fly away to get food and bring it back for them. So it's super important. Uh, that she's able to find the sources of nectar that she needs to feed herself and yeah. to feed her babies. So um, a couple things that we can do to help them out this time of year is we can put out some hummingbird feeders. Oh, yeah. And this is also a great way to attack, attract them to your house so that you can see them and appreciate them. Usually they're going to be red, and you can make your own hummingbird nectar using one part uh, cane sugar, like pure white cane sugar, mm -hmm. and four parts water. Yep. So if you did one fourth cup sugar, you would do four parts or four, one cup water, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then you'll uh, heat it together over the stove until it stops being gritty. It'll kind of melt together and then you'll wait for it to cool. And then you can put it into one of these different types of hummingbird feeders. They're always going to have some type of red to try to attract the hummingbird to it. They really like red flowers in nature and we kind of yeah. have made the hummingbird feeders to mimic that. Mm -hmm. And then you'll have to change it about every four to seven days or if you get hummingbirds like we do at the parks, they will empty them for you and then you'll <laughs> just change them when they're empty. But you'll know it's time to change them when they are cloudy or kind of yellowy. But if that seems like a lot of work, you could also just plant a plant that they enjoy. So in the spring, we've got wild columbine, which is what I've brought with me today. It's beautiful. And you can see it is red and yellow, a lot like the hummingbird feeders. They mm -hmm. like to come and eat the nectar from this plant. You could also plant fire pink or red buckeye flower. And then to continue to feed them throughout the summer and fall months, there's purple cone flower, blazing star. And one of my favorite plants is called bee balm. Oh, yeah, I have that. 
that. Do you? I do. That's a great one. Yeah. And it not only attracts uh, hummingbirds, but also swallowtail butterflies and clear wing hummingbird moths, which are a moth that looks exactly like a hummingbird. Yeah. And they're beautiful flowers, too. They really are. They yeah. smell amazing. Yeah, that's very <laughs> interesting. Well, Marie, thank you so much for coming in today and explaining all about the hummingbird, my favorite bird. Yay! All right. <laughs> well, don't go away because we have more when we return.